April is National Poetry Month, and All About Canadian Books is celebrating our Canadian talent with a reading. And I am so excited. I have four poets. I'd love to say in the house, but really it's on the Zoom. <laughs> and I'm so looking forward to hearing them read from their latest collections and also learn the inspiration behind their poems. And I'm thrilled that I have a fabulous co-host with me this evening, Halle Gattery. Halle lives in Ontario, and Fuse, her memoir, was published by Guernica Editions, and it won the 2023 Canadian Book Club Award for Nonfiction Memoir. Her collection of poetry, Rebellion Box, was released by Radiant Press in 2023, and her short stories, Widow Fantasies, are forthcoming with Gordon Hill. Halle is the Poet Laureate of Scugog Township, and I am so excited that she's co-hosting and looking forward to hearing Halle read from Rebellion Box. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Halle. Hi, Crystal. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm, I'm excited to read. I'm excited to be here for the second year in a row. And I'm excited you let me um, bother you about this every year and you're so receptive to my my bothersome emails. So thank you. Um, I am so excited to be reading a poem today. Um, and I'm going to be reading um, a poem called The Zignark Effect. And The Zignark Effect is a state of mental unease caused by um, uncompleted tasks. So people will have anxiety about tasks that are not exactly completed. So where this came into being with me was I used to work as a bartender at a really neat historical inn in Kingston, Ontario. And it was right across from a hospital, Hotel Dieu. And a lot of Indigenous patients went to this hospital. It was somehow government funded and they were funded staying at the hotel that was attached to the bar I worked in. And I noticed when I was there a lot of racism from people in general towards the indigenous people who came by. And I was in my early twenties and I didn't say or do anything about it. I didn't contribute, but I didn't say anything back. And that's always really bothered me. So I wrote this poem. For the record, it's not the fat cities, beers on tap, closing shift blues, or names of the regulars I remember most. Not even the one who brought me bear meat from his hunting trip, even though I said, no, no thank you. And no, I won't eat that, not because it's meat, but because it's bear. And how we looked puzzled a moment before breathing, ah, I see, but Makwa won't hold your survival against you. What I remember is the busiest weekend of the summer, tables packed, my gilded reflection floating in the bar's long to silvered mirror while I poured, oops, yeah. while I poured drinks, left them huddled and sweating on the glass rail, how I'd said nothing, not even, no thank you, when a waitress put it in an order and said, don't rush this one, not like Indians fucking tip anyway. So, I was really nervous about writing that poem. I thought, what will people think of me? I'm a terrible person. I didn't do the right thing. But this poem was actually an honorable mention in one of the League of Canadian Poets contests. And it really made me feel better about what you can do with poetry and say with poetry and how poetry is a portal to admission and exploration and interrogation of ourselves. And it's not a place where we should feel judged. And I was... It was, it was a difficult poem to write because of what I felt it said about me, but it was ultimately very rewarding. So thank you for allowing me to read it. And as co-host, I am now extremely excited to introduce Courtney Bates Hardy uh, to read from her latest collection. She is the author of Anatomical Venus, which was published by Radiant Press just this year, 2024, House of Mystery, by Chai Zine Publications and a chapbook Sea Foam from Jack Pine Press in 2013. Her poems have been featured in Best Canadian Poetry, Ballum, Event, among others. She's queer, disabled, and one third of a writing group called The Pain Poets. Welcome, Courtney. I'm so glad you're here. 
Thank you, Holly. Um, so I'm going to read a poem from my new collection, Anatomical Venus, which I just got copies of over the weekend. I'm really excited. Um, it's a beautiful book and my publisher did an amazing job. Um, so the reason it's called Anatomical Venus is because it's named after a wax anatomical model that was created in the 18th century uh, in Italy. And an anatomical Venus is a really beautiful figure of a woman made out of wax. And they were fully dissectable. So you could lift up the abdominal wall, you could see all of the organs and lift them out individually. And they were used to study anatomy before refrigerators existed. Um, and when I started writing poems for Anatomical Venus, I didn't know like why these figures fascinated me so much. It took me a really long time before I realized that I deeply related to the Anatomical Venus because I've been in multiple car accidents, um, which injured my neck and some of the nerves in my neck and shoulder. So I experienced chronic nerve pain. And so the Anatomical Venus is this sort of like outward um, expression of what most people can't see about me. Um, that they are this figure that sort of embodies that contradiction of like, they're created to look beautiful, but they also represent death. Um, and the poem I'm going to read is about um, a woman who was an anatomist in the 18th century. Um, I came across her work with wax anatomical models um, while I was doing research for the collection. And she mainly recreated body parts in wax, like uh, ears, hands, eyes, so all kind of like individual body parts um, rather than an entire body like the anatomical Venus. And she had a really fascinating life. And she also represented this incredible independence at a time when it was really unusual for women to be working as scientists or anatomists. Um, and even after her husband died, uh, she still continued working as an anatomist and she lectured on anatomy at the University of Bologna for um, quite a long time. So writing about her really provided me this way to kind of have a counterpoint to the anatomical Venus, which are these really erotic and vulnerable figures of women. Whereas um, this lady anatomist um, used her artistic and scientific skill to explore death and recreate parts of the body. And she's even credited with discovering previously unknown body parts. So uh, I called the poem, uh, The Lady Anatomist. She sharpens her tools, dips her scalpel, bears down on the saw. Here, let me pull back the skin to better display the brain. She can unmake your body then remake it entirely, an eye, an ear, a hand. She looks on death and takes her measurements, lifts her forceps, makes her notes, heats the wax, colors it pink, and molds it to her specifications. She will not lie on this table to be taken by feminine rapture. She will not settle for one string of pearls when she could have the whole colon. She gave up her child and guided her husband to his grave. She will not take your false titles. She is no mother, no doctor, no saint. She alone touches the cadaver. She will not be shamed for her work, nor praised. Thank you. I felt like I was in the room with you, Courtney, and you're anatomist. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Patrick. 
Patrick Grace is an author and teacher from Vancouver, BC. He has published two chapbooks, A Blurred Wind Swirls Back for You in 2023 and Dastardly in 2021. And his first full-length collection, Deviant, is out now with the University of Alberta Press. He moonlights as managing editor for Plentitude Magazine, and you can follow him on Instagram at the poet Patrick. And I would like to warmly welcome the poet Patrick to read from his brand new, almost released collection. Oh no, sorry, it is released collection, Deviant. <laughs> sorry, thank you, Patrick. Welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thank you, Crystal, and thank you for having me. Um, yes, I'm here with Deviant, my brand new first full-length collection out with the University of Alberta. Um, the poem I'm going to read is called A Cone of Light. This is not a poem I usually read. A lot of these poems are about growing up queer, about men that I've known, um, troublesome situations with men. But this is one of the few poems that made it in about family, a story that my sister and my mother, as I was growing up, used to tell me um, that I used to throw my mother's collectible toys into a hole in the porch. And I don't actually remember doing that. And I, I wanted to write this poem to sort of think a bit about memory and how with memory, sometimes if you're told something so many times, you don't really know as you get older if it happened or if you're just remembering it in the way that other people have told you. Because I don't actually remember doing this, but my mom and my sister would tease me. Remember you throw those old toys into the porch? And I don't actually remember doing it or, you know, like memory is kind of a funny thing, especially get older. Um, so, yeah, this one is called A Cone of Light. On my bare stomach, I disappeared old toys down crumbling holes in the porch. The kids next door soared on a new swing set, clink, clink over the fence, hidden in rhododendrons, birds chattering, mom asleep again somewhere. My sister ran barefoot along the burning sidewalk, gate open. They all swung to the clink clink of the chain links. I wasn't allowed over. Nothing new. Breaking heads off trolls with bejeweled bellies and disappearing them down the hole. After the last beheading, I stretched myself on the sidewalk and burned ants with my magnifying glass. I was still learning about convex lenses in school. A cone of light entered my palm, nothing. A screen door banged and the mother screamed for her children, calling them back or calling them away. It might've been lunchtime. The sun was high, our mom asleep somewhere, traffic and chittering and grass upon grass upon grass. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. That was amazing. You have such a sultry reading voice. It's great. I love it. So I am thrilled to be welcoming Ellen Chang Richardson to the virtual stage next. Ellen Chang Richardson is an award-winning poet of Taiwanese and Chinese-Cambodian descent. The author of Blood Belies, which is published by Wolzak and Wynn, just this month, and six poetry chapbooks. Their multi-genre writing has been published in Augur, Room, Vallum, among others. They co-founded Riverbed Reading Series and write collaboratively with the Poetry Collective Seven. Welcome, Ellen. It is lovely to have you. Thank you so much, Holly. And thank you, Crystal, for having all of us here to celebrate National Poetry Month. Courtney and Patrick, those were incredible readings. And I actually loved listening to the the stories behind, you know, the titles of your book and, and the collect the content of your books. Um, I'm going to read one poem tonight from my uh, debut collection, Blood Belies. Um, Blood Belies, the reason it's called Blood Belies is because we're in April right now, but next month, May, is Asian Heritage Month. And about five years ago, five, five or four years ago, I 
was sitting in a cafe and I was wondering to myself, why the heck, like, why in May of all months, Asian Heritage Month? Like, I'm Asian 365 days out of the year. Like, why, why this one month? And so I, I fell into a rabbit hole and I found out that, you know, in Canada, uh, even though communities have been celebrating their Asian heritage since you know, the early 90s, late 80s, you know, whatever, for time immemorial, um, Vivian, the Senate actually adopted a motion proposed by Senator Vivian Poi in 2001 to make May Asian Heritage Month um, and to celebrate that. And, and then it was you know, made official in 20, uh, 2002. And uh, 2023 actually marched the, marked the 100th anniversary since the Chinese Exclusion Act which was the only act in the history of Canada's immigration uh, that was based on the basis of race alone. Um, and that Chinese people were not allowed to immigrate even if they had British nationality because they were Chinese. And so I kind of fell down this rabbit hole and I thought to myself, oh, this sucks. Uh, how do I reconcile this? You know, how do I move forward? Um, because to me, like, yeah, even when I talk, talk about this with um, my colleagues, my friends, my fellow poets, like I, I, I talk about how Asianness is not just East Asia, it's Southeast Asia, it's South Asia, it's West Asia, it's the biggest, like after Africa, it's the, it's one of the biggest continents in the world. And there are so many diverse cultures that come together in this beautiful melting pot. And so then I thought about class structures. And um, and how class structures are dictated by blood, and the blood that we have is equates to the status that we're given. And really, that belies because that's a lie. We're all just people. We're the same flesh, bone, blood, shit. <laughs> so um, yeah. So most of the po most of the poems in the collection are are excavating that, and there's there's a lot of memory as well. I've had eight concussions and so that flows undercurrent to the collection in that like Patrick said memory splices memories fragmented it's never really what it is but then it is because you remember it the way that it is um and like Paul I said poetry is a portal so I'm going to read courtyard acupuncture which is a little bit of a love poem to fragmented memory In flame, face notes hang like dust, their feathered edges torn in wind. Those jasmine scented wax flies melting into beads as mosquito powder brushes against my veins. Finger tips, bright red dew, linger briefly just as antique petals do against my skin. Oh, thank you so much, Ellen. Oh, for that beautiful reading. And I would have to say, you know, I, I know Halle and I have had this discussion before. I'm really intimidated by poetry because, you know, you think of it as being so intellectual and and I just find it really intimidating. But to sit here and to listen to all of you read tonight, it's just I mean, it really it's it's emotional. <laughs> it's really emotional. And you've you've tapped into my heart and you've certainly made me feel less afraid of poetry. I don't feel afraid of it now. And I am just so, <laughs> Ellen's giving me the thumbs up, but it, it, it's it's so, it's so true. Um, I am in awe of your talent, all of you. And I mean, so proud that you are here this evening reading from your collections. And thank you. I mean, just a, a thank you, a thank you, a thank you to Halle for co-hosting, for Patrick and Courtney and Ellen for being guests and participating in All About Canadian Books, second annual poetry reading. 
And for all of our guests who are watching, I'll put links down below in the description box so that you can purchase these incredibly beautiful collections. Thank you to all and thank you for watching. Bye.